I want to run through this quickly uh, first so that we, you guys have this in the back of your head as you're moving around with your puppy, right? So these are some like, guidelines because, again, in dog training, there are very few rules. There are governing principles, and they need to be adjusted to the dog that's in front of you. And we make little adjustments. So as soon as somebody comes up with a hard and fast rule, there's going to be an exception, right? So I use the more flexible tool, guidelines. <laughs> but the idea is these are things you would want to have in the back of your head so that you're aware of these things as you expose your puppy to the world. So first and foremost, socialization is an ongoing process. It's happening all the time, whether you want it to or not, right? So be aware of your dog's experiences. That's the first step. Pay attention to it. If you, haven't been, if you haven't been dog training much, lots of people just aren't, it's not even on their radar to think about what kind of experiences your dog's having, what they're focused on, and what that might do to impact that dog's temperament going forward. People just say, well, let the puppy be a puppy, right? And in the old days when I started, that was kind of the general rule of thumb. There wasn't a lot of talk about early socialization and things like that. Dog training started when your dog was six months old. Like, you, there were no dog obedience classes for puppies. That's something in the last 20 to 25 years that they introduced puppy classes where little puppies came to socialize and have experiences. When I started dog training, your dog had to be six months old because you were going to go to an obedience class. They were going to put a six-foot leash and a choke chain on your dog and start pulling them around. That's what dog training was, right? And so that you can't do with little puppies without major fallout. So they had to be a certain age before they tolerate that. And so a lot of trainers had this idea, well, just let the puppy be a puppy for six months, and then we'll get to training. But of course, you've missed all that critical time in that development, right? So what I want people to start thinking of is your every experience your puppy has is an opportunity to make that a good experience, right? And the really important piece of the puzzle is that functional socialization isn't necessarily having your dog directly interact with new things, right? My dog doesn't have to go say hi to the other dog. It doesn't have to have that person pet it. Proximity to something new, having a positive experience, is socialization, and frequently the best socialization. So there's a new person standing here. My dog doesn't have to stay high. I reward my dog for hanging out around that person. My dog's aware that there's a, a new person there. My dog has a, gets a bunch of rewards from me, and off we go. That was a positive socialization experience. And I would say the bulk of our socialization is done like that with our dog having positive experiences around other people, other dogs, noises, places, that kind of thing, instead of trying to force them to directly interact, right? That's where you get yourself in trouble, especially with low threshold or more nervous puppies. You have a more nervous puppy, you think, oh, it'll get used to being handled if you let people come pet it, but it easily gets overwhelmed and starts to really not like new people. Every time some new person comes up, you're gonna let that person invade my space, put their hands on me, all that kind of thing, right? And this idea that that's what your dog needs to get better, for one dog, yes, they get better with that. For another dog, they get infinitely worse, right? And so the safer way of approaching that is just providing your dog with positive experiences around those things instead of forcing them to interact.